Hi everyone, it's Christina from the DIYMommy.com and today I want to share with you some tips on Christmas greenery plus give you a couple of adorable Christmas DIYs that you can do. I am here at Birchwood Meadows just north of Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. It's the family farm of one of my favorite Edmonton florists, Corey Christopher. Birchwood Meadows is a place to get some festive greenery for the holidays. It also has some really amazing DIY walk-in workshops as well as a great place to find some gifts. And I have a treat for you guys. I am here with Corey and we're gonna share with you some great tips for choosing greenery and for styling greenery. Also a few tips about paper whites and some ornament making. So let's get started. I know you are all interested to know everything about fresh holiday greens and I'm so excited to share a few of my favorite varieties as well as some great tips for ensuring that they look beautiful during the holiday season. Of course, fresh greens are a great way to add a little bit of lush holiday flavor to your holiday decor. They bring that gorgeous fragrance inside and looks absolutely exceptional. You can lay them on a table, put them in a vase, you know, or incorporate them onto the mantle. My first favorite greenery is cedar. It's the quintessential holiday green, as I like to say. It's lush, it's beautiful. You wanna look for bundles that look very, very healthy and fresh. Avoid ones that may seem dry at the tips, or if you're noticing wherever you're shopping from, if they've been out in the wind, you wanna avoid those ones because they're not gonna last as long. And of course, we want our greens to last as long as possible. So this one is beautiful as well because the cedar has almost two tones to it. You have the one side that is lush and green, and the other that's just a little bit lighter. So one of my foolproof tips is when you're creating an urn insert, why not look at varying what angle you're using of the greenery so that you're getting the use of both tones. It's really gonna make that planter look absolutely amazing. What we also have, another favorite of mine, and the smell oh, is amazing, is white pine. It's got a great shape to it, a little bit longer cascade. Now bundles seem to be a little bit smaller, but it goes a long way. So when you're looking, you want to make sure there's lots of branches on there that you can actually be trimming because you're not necessarily going to need all of one stock in whatever use you're doing. This looks amazing on a fireplace. My high recommendation is if you want to dress your mantle during the holiday season, do it a couple days before Christmas because we don't want it to dry out. Um, or incorporate it in to oasis or a water source that so that it makes sure that it's looking beautiful and green the entire holiday season. Now another one of my favorite greens that is doesn't get as much attention sometimes is what's called silver fir and look how gorgeous this is. So known for its two-tone one side that has this beautiful silver color flip it over and the dark green. This is again great to use in your outdoor planters. It's nice and sturdy, great stalks. And as you can see, it contrasts beautifully with the white pine as well as cedar um, to really give fantastic impact as you can see. If you're looking for something with a smaller needle, then I have to highly recommend the hemlock. Again, look at these little, almost spruce-like, except not as prickly. So great for handling during the holiday season. It's got a great length to it as well. So I love to lay this on my table, run a few candlesticks through there, a few ornaments nestled in. It really seems to hold them so they're not rolling off the table. Another great green that you can incorporate into your home. And then then we look at some of my favorites during the holiday season. So this is Oregonia. It reminds me of a boxwood. It's got a beautiful variegated leaf on it. This again is great outside. It dries beautifully as well. So if you are looking to use this outdoors, great opportunity for that as well as in a vase in your home. And then Magnolia. Nothing says the holiday season like a bundle of magnolia. The leaves, the velvety side that is almost copper in tone, that lush green. I incorporate these into everything. A fresh floral arrangement looks gorgeous with this as the base, or even just in a beautiful crystal vase, it looks absolutely stunning. So I highly recommend trying to find a beautiful bundle or two or five, as I like to say, of these. They're really a great addition. Now, my final one. 
This is Caroline Sapphire. What is amazing about Caroline Sapphire is the smell and the shape. It looks beautiful in a vase. The smell is absolutely everything you want Christmas greens to be. The biggest thing is, especially in Canada, we want to keep this indoors um, because we want to make sure that it's going to be nice and healthy. So stick it into a vase, walk past it and brush the needles because that fragrance is going to release throughout your home and another perfect addition to your vases and arrangements this holiday season. So I hope you're feeling inspired by greenery. There are so many uses for them. So you want to keep them moist. You want to keep them spritz as well so that they're going to be lasting longer out of the full sunshine if you can and also out of the wind because that easily dries them out but they are a great addition a really affordable option that's going to bring a little bit of holiday magic and cheer into your home So during the holiday season, I love bringing the outdoors inside. So these paper white bulbs are the perfect addition to anybody's house. So what we can do is start with a great glass container. This one's really nice. It's actually an ice bucket. So don't think that you got to go out and buy something brand new. You can use something from your cupboard. What we do is we're going to actually add in some gravel and rocks into that. So what we're going to do is simply pour these in. We're looking to add in about one inch. We're going to make sure they're nice and level, like so. And then we take the paper white bulb. So this is actually the paper white bulb. It's part of the Narcissus family, so it's similar to a daffodil in its growth. But you know what's amazing about this is it actually gets little white star flowers. What you want to do is just incorporate them right on top, like so. We can fit about five of them into there. Oh, maybe in this case six. Let's add that in. What we do is add water to the very bottom about, so that bulb is just having the water touch the very bottom. The roots will start to grow right out. And then within about three to four weeks, you will have beautiful blooming paper whites. What a perfect holiday gift to give your friends. So an extra little tip. So once you have your paper whites ready to grow, for the first couple weeks, there's not gonna be a lot happening. So we wanna spruce this container up. I've taken some cedar boughs, I cut them on a little bit of an angle and incorporate them along the side. This helps to give a little bit of freshness, a hint of green. And then as the paper whites start to grow, you're gonna to get to see them growing through a little bit of the cedar. You can also add in a little branch as well if you want to even make it a little more festive and add that natural touch. So, so what we're going to do today is we're going to build a little winter forest dome, like this little guy here. This is what she was looking at in the this shop that yeah. she loved. Yeah. I like it. You like yeah. it? Okay, well, good. Okay, so do you want to help me make one? Yeah. Okay, so can you put this inside for me? So this is sphagnum moss. So we're going to incorporate it into the bottom, and then we got to push it down a little bit, okay? Like, let's get our fingers in there. Oh, there we go. Push those down. This gives us the... Have you ever walked in the forest floor before? No? You ever, you ever been in the forest? Trees? Yes. Yes? So this is what it feels like. It's cushy, right? So now we got that. Okay. Let's add maybe one more piece. Okay. So what we do is we have a whole bunch of different greens here. What's your favorite green on the, ta uh, on the table? What one's your favorite? This one. <gasps> so this one is called Oregonia. Cool name, hey? So do we want to add that into there? But it might be a little tall, right? Okay, so can I can I give it a little trim for you? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to cut the top off for you. There we go. Do you want to put that inside? Okay. Oh, great. Do we want to make it stand up, though? Um, no. No, you don't want it to stand up? Okay. <laughs> Does not need to stand up in any sense of the word. Okay, what other ones do you like on this tray? Is there another variety that you like, or do you only like that one? Uh, I only like that one. You only like that one. Well, can we get a little more variety going? So maybe could we add in... What about this? Do you want to smell something? Yeah. Okay. Smell oh. that. Smell that. Do you smell anything? Yeah. Doesn't it smell pretty? Well, we should put that in for your friends, right? Because there's animals in the forest and we're going to pick one later, right? Okay, yes. so let's add this in. Okay, can I, am I okay to place it in? Why don't you tell me, am I doing a good job? Yeah. Oh, look at that. 
Do you want to add another one in, maybe? Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Here. Can I add it in? Yes, time? you can. There you go. Okay. Sneak that in. Oh, look at that. So cute. So cute. Do you like that? Okay. What about, can we add, do you like pine cones? Yeah. Do you want to add a pine cone in there? Okay. Maybe let's put it towards the back. Okay, I'll just sneak that. What about here? Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Do you want another pine cone? Um, no. No, you don't want another pine cone? Do you want an animal in there? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's your favorite animal that's in here? Mm. Do you want a dinosaur or do you want a lamb? Mm. No, you don't like those ones. Do you like a duck? A goat? So many choices. Okay, I'll just pick I'll take the swan away Okay. Great. Can you add that into there? There we go. Okay. Now, do we want to add... Do you like this moss? Yeah. Or this... What color do you like better? Mm. I know. Decisions, decisions. Mm. I like this one. You like this one? Okay. Can we add a piece of that in? Okay. How about this guy? Oh, look at that. Oh, we should get that duck standing up though, right? Okay. Oh, I'm going to just add a little more moss in there just to stick that around there. Okay. What do you think? It's good. Do you like it? Yeah. Are you going to hang it up at home? Yeah. Oh, awesome. Okay, we have one last thing. Okay, so what's this look like? Snow. Snow. Do you want to put some snow in there? Okay. Here you go. G give me your hand. Okay. Okay. Let's hold. Let's put a little bit in there. Okay. And can you dust it into there? Or actually, you know what? You can blow it into there. Okay. Okay. You can do it. Oh, look at. Here, why don't you blow, blow on my hand? Okay. Oh. Look how cool that was! It snowed in the forest! Cute, hey? Here, let's just add a little bit more sprinkle. Let's dust it on there. Nice. There we go. Thank you so much, Corey, for sharing your knowledge on greenery with us and also these really adorable DIYs for Christmas. Thank you, Birchwood Meadows, for hosting us. Make sure to check out more of Corey's work at coreychristopher.ca and more about Birchwood Meadows at birchwoodmeadows.ca. Thanks so much for watching my video today. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below which of these greenery tips was your favorite or if you have any tips on live greenery for the holidays to share. I would love to hear them. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!